This is Matt Wallace with your Minute with the Mayor um, for January 21st and a throwback Thursday, History of Council Bluffs. Uh, today we're talking about the Omaha Council Bluffs Street Railway and Bridge Company. Back in 1868, 125 years ago, the city of Council Bluffs authorized a horse-drawn streetcar line to operate on a four-mile trip from the city's downtown to the Missouri River using Broadway as its route. Two years later, the Council Bluffs Street Railway Company opened for service. Passenger carts were pulled by horses that had bells suspended from the necks of the horse as a warning sign to the public to keep out of their way as they traveled Broadway at a top speed of five miles per hour. Cart drivers worked straight shifts of 14 hours and they were paid $1.50 per day. Winters were cold and straw was added to carts as insulation. The trip from downtown to the river took about 30 minutes and ended when the cart arrived at 37th Street where the Missouri River ferry boats docked and transported passengers back and forth between Council Bluffs and Omaha. In 1872, the Union Pacific completed construction of their Missouri River Bridge and the Council Bluffs Street Railway expanded its horse-drawn line south where it connected to the UP tracks at about 23rd Street. The UP put passenger cars into service, which meant the horse-drawn cart passengers on Broadway could then transfer to a train and cross into Omaha 16 different times a day, rather than wait for the ferry boat. Although the river ferry service continued to operate, it soon was relegated primarily to shuttling newly arriving steamboat passengers traveling along the Missouri River. In 1886, George F. Wright, the builder of that original 1868 horse-drawn Council Bluffs Street Railway Company proposed establishing an electric street railway service over the Missouri River by means of constructing a new bridge north of the Union Pacific Bridge. The new company would be called the Omaha Council Bluffs Railway and Bridge Company. Their plan was accepted by Congress of the United States and by the Secretary of War. With a sanctioned monopoly over streetcar service in both cities, the Omaha Council Bluffs Railway and Bridge Company was among the earliest major electric street railway systems in the nation. By October 28th of 1888, a 3,200 foot long bridge was completed for the use of streetcars, wagons, and pedestrians, and it opened to the public two days later. The new bridge and its associated five miles of railway track had cost the Omaha and Council Bluffs Railway and Bridge Company an estimated $750,000 to construct. Initially, the new bridge was named the Douglas Street Bridge, but some 30 years later, during the Depression, the bridge was purchased by Exarbon, and they renamed it the Exarbon Bridge. One of the bridge piers remains in the river south of the current 480 bridge. Within a year after the bridge's construction was complete, the entire Council Bluffs operation had been converted from horse-drawn carts to electric streetcars. Those electric cars reached top speeds of 15 miles per hour, and while they did cross the river into Omaha via the Douglas Street Bridge, they only traveled as far as 9th Street. Local attorney and former state senator George Wright was elected secretary of the new company and under his direction, the Omaha Council Bluffs Railway and Bridge Company built its first electric rail line ever constructed in Iowa, Nebraska. By 1890, the company had built 90 miles of tracks in the metro area, more than any other U.S. city except for Boston. In those days, one quarter would buy four ride tokens, good for four streetcar rides of unlimited duration. As a means of increasing streetcar ridership, the Omaha Council Bluffs Railway and Bridge Company also ran an amusement park at Lake Manoa from the 1890s to 1918. A round trip fare from Omaha to Manoa cost 25 cents or four times the usual ridership fare. As a point of reference in those days, a nickel would buy a ride at the park's roller coaster or it could purchase a hot dog. In those days, there wasn't such a thing as a large electrical utility provider, so the streetcar company had to produce its own electricity in order to power their cars. The production of electricity and applying it to an urban transportation system involved boiling water under high temperature and high pressure to convert it into steam 
that would drive friction machines called generators or dynamos. In order to produce enough steam for one day's operation required about 150 tons of coal to heat the water in the boilers. Between the furnaces was a series of radiators known as fuel economizers and raw coal was put through coal crushers and then carried in layers of crushed coal by conveyor belt that ran under the boilers so that the greatest possible degree of heat could be extracted to provide adequate peak time electrical capacity during the morning and evening rush commutes. The financial investment of the Omaha and Council Bluff Street and Bridge Railway Company and its central power station, its rotary converting substations and high voltage cables and conduits not to mention the cost of track insulation and street car construction ran in the millions. While the company operated successfully after expenses, it was minimally profitable. The company also maintained a portable substation that was housed on a specially constructed streetcar that could then be taken to any part of the line. This portable substation was found to be very useful in the summer in handling the heavy Lake Manawa traffic. In 1907, the company's trolleys were annually carrying about 51 million commuters, shoppers, and others to and from Council Bluffs, Omaha, in the Omaha suburbs of Florence, Benson, Dundee, and South Omaha. By World War I, the streetcars had fare boxes. Before that, a conductor moved through the crowded cars collecting passengers' money. In 1943, the Omaha Council Bluffs Streetcar and Bridge Company began training women as streetcar operators as many of its male drivers were called in the military service during World War II. The women drivers were paid the exact same wages as their male counterparts. However, the company's workforce was largely segregated by race through 1954, hiring only white conductors. Black Americans who worked for the company were only allowed to work in the machine shop or as maintenance employees. Black American Customers were required to sit in the back of the streetcar throughout the entire existence of the service. These policies made the company an obvious target for civil rights protests. In 1948, the 50-year contract of the Omaha Council Bluffs Streetcar and Bridge Company had expired. At the time, the company was one of the last streetcar operators in the United States. Public transportation routes began switching from electric streetcars to gas buses in 1952, and the last streetcar made its final run on March 5, 1955. The last ride was ceremonial in nature with city officials and business leaders riding in a bunting draped trolley from Dundee to a streetcar barn at 10th and Pierce Street. Since then, there has been no form of light rail, trolley, or streetcars in the metro area. Today, there is renewed interest among some metropolitan community leaders who believe that a modern light rail streetcar system, similar to the rapid transit systems found in other large metropolitan areas throughout our country, may be one of the best ways to solve Omaha's mass transit needs. Only time will tell if this actually happens. That's your Minute with the Mayor. Have a great day. Be kind to somebody and wear a mask.